The homie Nameless about to go down. that you subscribe to everything that's Esquire. So here today, I have someone who is, I feel like he came out of nowhere. I, I knew about him a long time ago when he was in, I feel like he was in a music video. He was getting his hair cut and my dude was like, yeah, my man's is getting his hair cut because he's about to be in this video. He's about to go off to somewhere and do something. Uh, and now he's always doing something and always on my screen. Otis Winston. Hey, hey. How are you? I'm amazing. I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. Yes, listen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. I'm glad that we got to. Of course. So let's talk about the beginning. Um, when did you know that you wanted to be an actor? Did you know? I, actually, I tell people this all the time. I didn't choose acting. Acting chose me. You know, um, TV has always been my safe haven. It's always been my escape. Even as I was a, when I was a kid, when I was a shorty, um, I would use television to escape my reality. Yeah. Use television to escape from the projects of Young Son, Ohio. Use television to escape not having my dad around or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I just would use TV to use that as a as a tool to make my use my imagination to live someone else's life that wasn't mine. <laughs> no, I get that. I used to feel weird. Uh, you know how you go in the movies and it's dark, and mm -hmm. but then when you leave, I still feel like I was in the journey. Yeah, still yeah. at the movie. Absolutely, it would take me a minute. Absolutely, because <laughs> you were you were in it. in it. You know what I'm saying? You were using what most people don't use this day, and that's that imagination of manifestation, whatever it is that you want. Say that. What has been your favorite role so far? Oh. Uh, it's been a few, you know. Um, I love playing um, Donald the Street Man on Venom 2. Okay. The reason being is that was my second time being in Venom. I was in Venom 1, and I got to act with Tom Hardy because I was chasing him through the woods. And then Venom 2, my scenes were directly with Tom Hardy. Okay. And, and what happened in that scene is when the parasite known as Venom and, and, and Eddie... Tom's character were arguing, he hit the fire alarm and Venom comes out of Eddie and crawls and jumps out of the window and lands onto me and I morphed into Venom. And to be able to do that and, and looking at where I come from, you know, a young man, young kid from Youngstown, Ohio, who stuttered, couldn't talk to, he's 11, told he would never be able to properly talk. And now here I am in San Francisco working opposite Tom Hardy being um, directed by Andy Serkis, working on a Marvel film. <laughs> turning into Venom. Turning into Venom. <laughs> Yo. Turning into Venom. Yo. So that, that was by far, I think, one of my, my most memorable ones. Okay. Okay, what's been the hardest role to play? Uh, most I'm, difficult to get into or something? Um, I would say I was kind of scared doing Lennox Lewis. Okay. I wouldn't say I was scared. It was just like, he had an accent, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I got prepared for it years before when I met Buster Douglas and Buster was training me because there, there was a movie coming out about Buster's life that I was like, look, let me get in here and train with Buster. Maybe yeah. I might be able to, you yeah. know, and had no idea that years later that that training would come into yeah. play with me playing Lennox Lewis. Shout and, out to and, the GOAT. Yeah, man, he's Shout the man. Out to the Buster goat. is the man. Shout man. out to and, the and, and he did it and he made time for me um, and it was before I was doing all this. Yeah. You know, so he still made time for me. So preparing to be Lennox Lewis, 
because I had no idea I was playing Lennox Lewis. <laughs> so they asked me if I would come do this film. I said, absolutely. Yeah. Um, they like, I right, just got to do a few boxing scenes. I was like, all right. So that, that was it. But when I got there and they put me in hair and makeup and costume and I came walking out the trailer, the director who played, um, um, the director, um, um, Director X. Yes. He was the one who directed it. Wow. When they saw me, they were like, yo. Wow. And I went from only, I was only supposed to be there for one day, one boxing scene, and it turned into two weeks. Speaking speaking lines, extra scenes wow. added. And that, it just, that's how when you're walking in purpose and, and God just makes sure those doors are open. Right place, right time. Absolutely. Ah! Okay. 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 So, what what are what are the acting goals? What are our goals? Where do we want to be? The, I, everything I do, I do to be the best. You know, I, I want to be mentioned in the names. I mean, in the rooms, and my names mentioned with with everyone else. Yes. You know, I don't I don't do it to to just be like ah yeah I got this little movie out here. If that was the case, I would have stopped a long time, a long ago, time ago because I've I've done that already. I've been in over twenty five um, movies and TV shows. Um, I I want to change people's lives. So the goal for me is to touch these kids who feel like they're unseen and not seen and overlooked. Yes. I want them to be able to see that it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So my goal yeah. is to be able to bring things to Columbus and turn Columbus into like what Atlanta turned into, what Tyler did with Atlanta. I want to do with Columbus because we have it. Listen, whether whether we are the movie theater, the movie screen, or the factory that produces the people, to it doesn't matter Absolutely. to me. I'm with it. Tell me about your workshop. Ah, uh, my acting workshop. It's called Focus on Films, Act on the Vibe. Okay, how do we act with a vibe? Basically, for example, what you and I are doing right now. Okay. We're not just talking, we're vibing. We are. We're vibing. Because it's a vibe. Exactly. So when you start acting, mm -hmm. you're not actually acting. You never act, you become. Yes. And the only way you become is that you vibe with the person who's on scene with you. Okay. If, 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 if I have a scene with you, mm -hmm. is I... I in my working in my workshop, I always use this example. I make people get up, we start dancing, then I make two people dance together, and I tell one person to do everything opposite to what the person is with them dancing doing. Okay. So it looks completely chaotic and crazy and messy. Yes. And then I whisper in their ear, now go with it. And then they go with it and they're in sync and it's a flow mm -hmm. and it's a vibe. Mm -hmm. And everyone is clapping now and dancing and they're smiling by looking at them. Oh yeah. Because you see somebody doing something great, you're like, ah, oh, I see yeah. you, I see. That's what acting is. If I'm okay. in a scene with you, I'm vibing, not just with you, I'm vibing with the director, I'm vibing with the camera, yeah. I'm vibing with everything. I'm vibing with myself to make sure I'm vibrating higher to make other people drawn in to what I'm doing. No, that makes sense. I guess I never really thought about it like that. Yeah, a lot I of people thought don't. I never thought about it like that. I, I like to look at the clips uh, from the last one. I love how there were, uh, it was an intergenerational situation. My girl Riley was there. She's like 10. And then there was, there was all kinds of people there. Riley killed it. Listen, Riley is amazing. She Shout out to Riley. Riley killed it. She <laughs> killed it. And it was, I was afraid, I'm going to be honest, you know, mm -hmm. I was afraid to have her come because I'm like, okay, can she keep up? You know, and, and, and because you never want a kid to be overwhelmed. Absolutely. And as soon as I put her up, and so what I did is I tested her with the improv. Because mm -hmm. we do improv, we do scene studies, and, and we do monologues. I'm just teaching about camera angles and everything. Okay. And when I got her up and she did the monologue, as soon as I saw her put her hand on her hip while she was walking. Oh, and yeah. And then, then the fake limp with the scene study, I was like, yeah, oh, she's yeah. ready. Oh, she's yeah. Ready. yeah. And I love it. I love that her parents, you know, um, um, brought her in and, and I love that because yeah. they're invested in her yeah. so that she can be the best version of herself. She's amazing. She is. She's amazing. So when is the next workshop? Hi, this is Otis Winston. We just finished our last Focus on Films Acting with the Vibe workshop with Otis Winston for 2023. Coming back in 2024, it's going to be in January, probably the first or second week of January. Please come check it out. If you haven't been here, you're missing something. It's special. I'm telling you. Everybody that came today, they vibe, they laugh, they dance. We had a good time. It's actually something that everyone is learning, including myself. So if you want to come out and just learn, 
or just sit, or just dance, or just laugh. This is the body. There's nothing like it in Columbus. We're trying to bring the culture of acting here. I'm tired of having to go to Atlanta, Chicago, LA, New York, Louisiana. It's time to make home, home the spot. It's time to make people come here. And we're starting with this. Focus on films. See you in 2024. Bigger, we want better, we are vibe. And as always, stay focused. All right, y'all, peace. So you can find it on Eventbrite. All you gotta do is put in Focus on Films, um, Acting with a Vibe with Otis Winston, it'll pop up. And you know, my my focus brand, of course. Um, <laughs> and, and it's just something that's, that's loving, man. It's yeah. a great time. We vibe, we laugh, we cry, we, network um this this next class i got a hopefully a, a, a real good special guest that's gonna pop up okay. someone who's helped me in my career and that's what i'm that's why i'm doing it yes people ask me how have i done it for 14 years without mm -hmm. an agent being in columbus ohio it was networking so the way i did it i'm trying to show other people if i can do it you can do it listen because the network in columbus alone is crazy because yeah. it's a, it's about the people that you know but it's really about the people that they know absolutely and that's the part absolutely <laughs> that's the part we're, we're close to so much greatness and sometimes people don't understand so i love that you're putting it right in their face absolutely because you have to i'm here because robbie reed the great casting director robbie reed who's vp of casting at bet mm -hmm. she saw something in me yeah when i didn't see it she saw it yeah. she's the one who gave me my first acting gig and she has discovered people like Derek luke mikhail pfeiffer yeah um the guy who played radio raheem she, she <laughs> yeah. discovered i mean she got samuel jackson on her on the map she put i mean jada pinkett smith she yeah. put everybody i mean anybody who's anybody and Black Hollywood, Robbie has had her hand in getting them where they need to get to get. And, and she discovered me, you know. Um, so I needed someone. Yeah. And not only was it Robbie, then there was Casey. Casey Hardfield, who's my brother, my mentor, who yeah. has from since I was a great powerful, I've done ten movies with him since then. Man. So it's networking. That's crazy. You need somebody who can help you. Then you got Bill Delaney, who's from Columbus, who's over there working on SWAT. He got me on SWAT. Now I've been on SWAT three times. <laughs> you got people like Lisa France, who's a director who works with Ava du DuVernay. Yeah. She's from Ohio. She definitely so it's is. all about networking. It is. Child, it 